This week, one of our pro members shared a cool video idea, which recently won an award site of the day too. It features amazing scroll-based market transitions with staggered font weight animation, all tied to scroll. We haven't covered this type of text animation before, and I believe you won't find any videos on YouTube or the GCF forum as well demonstrating this scroll-based animation. In today's video, I'll show you how to create this animation using Google Fonts, GCF, and Scroll Trigger. If you enjoy the content, please leave a like and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. For access to the source code, check out Code Pro via the link in the description. All right, let's dive into the code now. Let's start by creating our main container. We'll add 5 sections to ensure we have enough space for scrolling. The hero section, about, a section for the marquee elements, services and a footer. In the hero section, we'll simply add an image. The about and services sections will contain some placeholder text. For the footer, we'll include an h1 element. Next, in the marquee section, I'll create a container for the marquee and assign it a unique ID. Inside this container, I'll add the actual marquee element. I'll add 5 divs and call them items. 4 of these divs will contain images, while the remaining one will have an h1. I'll also add an extra class called with text for styling purposes. I'll replicate this marquee container three more times, updating the IDs, images, and the order of the item with the H1. In the first and third containers, the item with the H1 will be second in the order, while in the second and fourth containers, it will be second to last. That's pretty much it. Now let's move on to styling. First, we need to use variable fonts for this purpose. The more font weights the variable font includes, the better. You can find variable fonts on Google Fonts. For this project, I used a Google font called Big Shoulders Display. Make sure you specify the format too. If for some reason the TTF file doesn't work, you can use any online converter to convert the font file from TTF to WOFF2 and it will work. So let's start by defining the font face. Next, we'll reset some basic styles. We'll set the margin and padding to zero and set box sizing to border box for all elements. For the HTML and body, we'll set the width and height to 100%, use our chosen font family and ensure horizontal overflow is hidden. Images will be set to cover the entire width and height of their containers with object fit cover. For the paragraphs, we'll use a font size of 42 pixels, send the font width to 500 and transform the text to uppercase. Each section will have a width of 100% and a height of 100 viewport height. The about and services sections will have some padding and a different background color. In the footer section, we'll center the content using flexbox, set the background color and text color. The H1 in the footer will have a font size of 10 viewport width and be uppercase. The marquee section will have a height of 150 viewport height, use flexbox for column layout and have a white background. Each marquee container will be positioned relatively with a width of 125% and a height of 250 pixels. They'll use flexbox for layout, have some margin at bottom and hidden overflow. The marquee itself will be positioned absolutely, centered vertically and will use flexbox with some gap. We'll offset the first and third marquees to the left by 15%. For the items, they'll use flexbox to center their content. The ones with the text will have a flex value of 1.5 and the H1 inside them will be uppercase with a font size of 140 pixels. For smaller screens, we'll adjust the marquee section height to 100 viewport height. 
set the marquee container with 250% and the height to 150 pixels. The second and fourth marquees will be offset to the left by 35%. We'll also adjust the text items to have a flex value of 1 and the H1 font size to 60 pixels. Finally, we are going to add Lenny Smooth Scroll, so I'll just paste some CSS code from the documentation. That's it. Let's get to JavaScript now. First, we wait for the DOM content to load using DOM content loaded and register the scroll trigger plugin with GSAP. We define a function called animate cares that will handle the font weight animation for individual characters. This function takes two parameters, the characters to animate and an optional reverse flag to control the direction of the animation. Inside this function, we set up stagger options to control the timing of each character's animation. The each property determines the delay between each character's animation and the from property sets the direction of the animation, either from the start or the end. Then we use gsaps from to function to animate the font weight of the characters from 100 to 900 over a duration of 1 second. We use a linear ease for smooth transition and apply stagger options. The animation is tied to a scroll trigger instance that triggers when the parent marquee container element comes into the view. The start and end properties define when the animation starts and ends based on scroll positions and scrub ensures the animation syncs with the scrolling. We then use split type to split the text inside the item h1 elements into individual characters, allowing us to animate each character separately. Next we select all the marquee container elements and loop through them. For each marquee container, we determine the start and end positions for the marquee animation. For even indexed containers, the start is 0% and the end is 10%. For the odd indexed containers, the end position is minus 15%. This creates a staggered scroll effect. Then we again use these apps from two function to animate the marquee's horizontal position from the start to the end values. This animation is also tied to a scroll trigger instance, triggering when the container comes into view. Inside each marquee, we select the words, h1 elements and animate the characters within them using the animate cares function we defined earlier. For odd indexed containers, we set the reverse flag to true to animate the characters in the opposite direction. Finally, we initialize Lenis for smooth scrolling. We update scroll trigger on Lenis scroll events and sync GSAP trigger with Lenis for a smooth animation experience. You can check out Lenis documentation for more details. That's it. Now let's see the final result in action. Hope you found the video helpful, see you in the next one.